guys, it turns green when you hit it. Sorry. On the right. There you go. Rocky. Rocky. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is true and accurate? I do. Thank you. Ms. Green, I can... Are you the st same Steve Rocky that pre prepared uh, direct testimony and exhibits? Yes. Do you have any corrections or additions to your testimony? None. Other than on page nine, uh, on exhibit 10, um, it is line 13 rather than second photo. It should be first photo. And on line 14, it states third photo, and it should be second photo. Thank you. If you were asked the same questions today, would you give substantially similar answers? Yes. I move admission of uh, Steve, Rock Steve Rocky's testimony and exhibits. Are there objections? No objections. Seeing no objections, the board will admit the evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. I tender the witness. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Rocky, I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the Sierra Club. And uh, it's my understanding you were in the pathway of the Dakota Access Pipeline? Yes, I was. Um, did you uh, intervene in that IUB proceeding on that project? No. You wish you had? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, Just so the board gets a, a flavor of what um, the current landowners in the path of summit might expect, um, just give us a sense of what uh, the construction was like and what you um, experienced as the construction was progressing. Um, we got hit when it got extremely wet. Um, Number one, they didn't remove uh, the proper amount of topsoil. Then it rained continually. It, they they didn't. If it wasn't physically raining, they were still working, and uh, it's impacted mixing soil, um, compaction, and you know to this day, you know we have over 50 percent crop loss over the area. Yeah, today. And that's after how many years? Uh, seven years, I believe. Um, you mentioned missing the topsoil on the subsoil. Uh, can you explain that in a little more detail? Um, well, uh, they, you know, they state, uh, uh, according to Section 199, they were supposed to remove topsoil to color change, which that's a real defined area according to any of us that do any you know land uh, clearing or anything because you go from black to yellow and in my situation we have anywhere from 24 to 26 inches of black topsoil um, according to what we calculated is what they removed was approximately nine or ten inches and then moving forward, it, it became wet. And so then, you know, they mixed that remaining topsoil with the clay as they were constructing. Um, as they were constructing and mixing the topsoil and the subsoil, were you out there trying to stop them or did you do anything? Yeah, I, I first come out there once they had stripped, after they had stripped the topsoil, and, and, and at that point I um, got a hold of ISG and I said, you know, they haven't stripped enough, which we were told, you know, they were going to strip, and which according to Section 199, I thought that was well defined, um, that they were going to st strip all the topsoil. Anytime we're constructing any sort of a terrace or anything like that, we will remove all that topsoil before we construct, construct the terrace to rebuild it. Um, and at that point, you know, they agreed with me that they wasn't doing it. They tried to get them to come back 
to strip the remaining amount off, but uh, they uh, did, they decided to get, they didn't want to do it. Who is they? Uh, it would be Precision Pipeline, Dakota Access. The construction company. The construction company. Well, it was a. It was. It was not only them, but uh, Dakota Access also. Did you talk to Dakota Access people? Uh, no, I never did. Okay. I. They. They had tried multiple times to stop them uh, uh, from from moving forward. They even worked to one point. Uh, the inspectors had erected fences on both ends of mine to try to get them to correct the issue um, they basically just removed the fences and says that they had their legal team in place and they are moving forward uh, you sort of anticipated my next question what if anything did the inspe- of the county inspector do uh, well the county inspector I felt um, was very knowledgeable, knew what they needed to do, but they had no power, no power whatsoever. I mean, they even admitted it. Uh, give the board, if you could, a sense of what kind of equipment the construction crew uses uh, so, they, uh, so we get a better understanding of, of how that might impact the soil. Uh, they use a lot of large bulldozers, excavators. Uh, most of them would would be well in exceeding 100,000 pounds, which would be several times more yet than what farm the largest farm machine it would be. Are you a farmer, obviously? Yes. Okay. Um, we've heard some um, influence, I think, um, that while well, farm machinery is big and heavy too, so what's the difference? Uh, what's your response to that? Well, the difference was we don't go out there in standing water. We don't go out when it's you know uh, wet because uh, it will you know ruin the soil. Uh, were there incidents or times during the Dakota Access construction on your property when there was actually standing water and they were still constructing? Oh yes, so yes. Multiple times. Yeah. Um, did you have some photographs with your testimony? Yes. But can we pull up his testimony in the photographs? Objection, Your Honor. State your objection. All of these questions are covered in his direct testimony, which has been pre-filed and has been admitted. He's not being cross-examined. We're now being asked to pull up his direct testimony so that Mr. Taylor may do a, a full direct examination of his direct testimony, which is already admitted. Uh, I would object in the interest of time that we not engage in further direct examination. This is a time for cross. I think I can um, ask him to clarify uh, the the exhibits. Um, You know, uh, direct testimony refers to exhibits, but it doesn't really clarify or describe them like we can uh, get from testimony here. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, Mr. Taylor, you can proceed with clarifications. Thank you. But they need to be clarifications. Yes. So if we can pull up um, his direct text, a uh, testimony in the exhibit. So can you clarify, let's go back up to the first one. So can you clarify what that top photo is? Uh, That shows how uh, during those muddy conditions they had mixed uh, the topsoil with the subsoil. And you can see the black soil and the yellow soil? Yes, that's correct. Okay, let's go on down to the next one. And does that again show the mixing of the soils? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Um, based on your experience, would you have any suggestions to the board here for um, any 
uh, conditions they might put in a permit that would uh, prevent the kind of thing that happened to you? Well, the um, inspectors need some power. You know, they, they, I think they do would do a good a real good job if they're allowed to, but that was just the issue with the last, uh, with the code access. They just basically had, you know, no power in stopping them, and they didn't stop for nothing. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Mr. Jordan. Thank you. Um, how much time dealing with the, in the last seven years dealing with the headaches of the crop loss and trying to work the field to get the yields back as well as taking the photos and documenting and working all of this would, would you estimate you've spent? Hundreds of hours. And, and has Dakota Access or their uh, third party construction contact contractors compensated you for that time? No. I, the only compensation I got with me was before construction. And, and so for all of the, the post um, signing of an easement, um, none of that, that time and the headache and hassle and inconvenience has been compensated? None. And would you say that's uh, been an economic detriment to you? Most definitely. And did you on the front end believe and trust uh, the Dakota Access and land agents that their, they and their contractors would do right by you? Yes, I when I I've been in several construction projects, and you know I with uh, with the code or section one ninety nine pretty well spelled out. You know they said you know that they were going to remove all the topsoil, and per their specifications, I would have agreed with it. Same way with working in you know wet conditions. You know it's pretty it spelled it out, but nobody had any power to to. Uh, make them adhere to those rules. Would, would you say now in retrospect that that trust you had initially placed on them was misplaced? Most definitely. All right. And are, are you here to um, make other folks aware so hopefully they don't get into the same bad situation? Yes, we don't, definitely don't want to go through this situation again because the, the damages there are permanent at, you know, at this point. Thank you, sir. Nothing further. Questions from the parties? All right, seeing none. Um, one quick follow up that relates to one of Mr. Jordy's questions as well. On pages 9 and 10, <coughs> lines 19 through 4, you discussed the crop loss due to Dakota Access Pipeline. Did you notify Dakota Access about the damage? Yes, I actually notified them two weeks prior to harvest, which, and I did that the year prior to that also um and so and i also allowed them if they wanted to go out and access it you know i i did everything according to what i was supposed to do and no response uh, no response in year 2021 2022 i got a response and they, I believe they come out, looked at it, and then in 2020, or 2021, see, uh, 20, yeah, 21, I had no response, 22, and both 21 and 22, I notified them two weeks prior to harvest, um, 2022, they, they, had the ability, which I believe they did, come out and and observe it. And I don't know whether they sent anybody in to do some sort of a yield estimate or not. But then, um, then I had uh, the crop insurance people come in and come up with an estimate over that uh, affected area in 2022. Okay, good. Thank you. we could quickly pull up direct exhibit number seven of Mr. Rocky. And 
sir, these are some of your pictures. I just got a couple clarification questions based on some pictures. If we could blow up those just a little bit. So, can you describe this picture for me? It's basically after um, the trench had dug and they had laid the pipe and then we got a large amount of rain and enough rain that they actually, um, you know, floated that pipe to the top, which at that point they dewatered multiple times on standing corn outside the easement area, which ISG reports show that. Um, and they, they just continued every time. As soon as somebody would leave, they'd be right back at it to get that water out of that, out of that trench. Cause my farm is basically, you know, per almost perfectly tabletop level. So, you know, there's a large area that they had to dewater. So the dewatering process took the water out of the trench and put it into a field that was not part of the temporary easement. Definitely not. We basically you... flooded a field that was already inundated with water. And you stated it floated? Yeah, that pipe has floated. Actually, it was dug probably 12 feet deep there, so that water's 12 feet deep. And then if we can go to direct exhibit number nine, please. And again, if you, I, I think I know what I'm seeing here, but I just want to hear your assessment of what I'm looking at in this picture. Um, I went out there and seen that they were using topsoil to cover the pipe. And so then I called the inspectors, but nobody was around, called the inspectors and the county board of supervisors to come out at that point. And I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, I can't believe that they were you know, doing it, but. Did they attempt to remove any of that black dirt back well, out? Only yes. when they got there and they forced them to, they made them then bring back trucks in and back out that topsoil. But if I hadn't have caught it, you know, within a few hours or whatever it might have been, it would all have been covered up. That was not their intent to remove it. All right, thank you. That's all the clarification questions I have. Thank you, sir. Ms. Greenhagen, for redirect. I just have one one redirect. Um, just just for clarification, when you were talking about uh, taking the topsoil to color change, is that what you would ask them to do when they put it on the line sheet? Yes, that's correct. I even told them ahead of time, you know, the, how much topsoil I had there, and I put on the line sheet, which they, which I was told at that point they would do what I put on the line list. They refused to put it as special provisions, but they did put it on the line list at 24 inches of topsoil. So it was on the line list rather than being in the, as a definition of topsoil on that code, right? Yes. Topsoil definition, I believe, states down to color change. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Unless there's any questions on redirect, you may step down. Thank you.